after we acknowledge who we're praying to in secret, the next thing we should be focusing on is his agenda. Because he has a plan for you, Dora. He has a plan and that plan is already done in heaven. So when you go into prayer, you're not going to prayer trying to make up a plan. Does that make sense? <laughs> Your plan is already done. So all you got to do is tap into the plan that's already happening for you. I pray this is a blessing, you guys. Kita is already done. Every... Welcome each and every one of you here to Fuel Station Church. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. Uh, as I say each week, I'm in a room with some amazing Jesus disciples, and I am so honored to be able to be here and to be able to speak with you. If you have not had a chance to like and subscribe to our channel, we do actually do so at this time. We started a new series entitled The Steps to a Transformational Prayer Life, and today we're going to go into episode two. Um, so disciples, we're going to go to Matthew chapter six today. Last week... Um, in your Bibles, um, I we went we were in Luke chapter eleven last week. This week we're going to go into Matthew chapter six because in Matthew chapter six, um, he's talking about the same story um, as Luke, but in Matthew, I like how Matthew is bringing it out. Uh, Luke, the thing I like about when Luke brings it out is Luke is talking about when the the, the Luke shows the disciples asking Jesus teach us how to pray. The disciples asked them in Luke, but in Matthew, out of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is sharing this concept about prayer with them. And I just kind of want to bring you here so we can go into the steps. Last week, I was sharing with you about how we need to see him as our father. And um, that is a very important thing. And we're going to see here in Matthew chapter 6, eight. he's going to repeat the same thing. Um, but in today's teaching, I just want to just go over five scriptures. We're going to talk about all of the all of everything. But today we're going to focus on five scriptures today. All right. And for those of you who are watching this, I pray that this speaks to you. And I pray that your prayer life has changed as well. So in Matthew chapter six, let's start at verse five. And we're going to go to verse 10. Verse five says, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse six. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret and thy father, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Verse seven. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition or a lot of words as the heathens do, for they think that they should be heard for their much speaking, for their much talking. Be not like them, for your heavenly father know it what you have need of before you even ask. Verse nine, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, in verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, I'm going to stop at verse 10 because um, for today's teaching, I want to highlight verse nine and 10. Verse nine to 10 is what we're going to really talk about. But before we go into that, I was showing you guys last week how the, how it's important that when the scripture says, when ye pray. So that means all of us have to pray consistently. You're going to notice in the, in the day that we live in and now, one of the things that, um, we are fighting with in this generation is distractions. There's so many other things that we can be doing. And because of all the distractions, it's so much harder for people to put prayer into their schedule. And so I'm learning that in order to be effective in this generation, you almost got to live more simple. So if you're trying to, if you get caught up with all the new apps that's coming out, with all the new TV shows that's coming out, with all the new free uh, cable channels that's coming out, with all the new internet things that's coming out, you're not going to have time to do nothing because every day something new is coming out. Every day there's a new podcast. There's a new um, 
series. There's a new something coming out that can take your attention away. So what the disciples have to do in this day is they have to actually now get more laser focus and kind of start to pull back and say, let me only focus on the things that really matter. OK, who in here want to really live the abundant life Christ had for you? OK, in order to get that life, you can't get that life with all of the other stuff that everybody else is doing. This abundant life is going to come with a more simplistic approach and and. I'm actually shocked that I'm talking about being more simplistic because I used to be the most complicated and complex person. I, I like a lot of different things and new gadgets and stuff. That's been me all my life. And now I'm learning simplicity is king, meaning you focus on the things that you're 100 percent sure you're supposed to focus on. Other stuff that may come in your life. Yes. Enjoy your life. You listen. I'm the biggest. I will be the first to tell everybody. I want you to have the best life. I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to have fun. I want you to laugh, travel, do things. But you're doing all that with the understanding of knowing that if your Lord and Savior come back, you're prepared. That you're not having fun and doing all this stuff. But if you hear the call, you're not ready. That's not abundant life. Abundant life is my ticket is good. Now I can start enjoying all this other temporal things that God has provided for me in my journey of preparation before he he comes back. So when it comes to prayer, the, the disciple today have to be aware of the distractions because you're going to notice that every day we get we only get 24 hours a day. We get 24 hours. That's it. And I can guarantee you right now, most people, their 24 hours are completely stacked and filled. And then if you ask God, when do you have time for God? Oh, man. Um, I squeeze them in right between episode three and four of the Netflix series. <laughs> you know, it's like I'll get a quick prayer right there, you know. That's how we, because in our mind, we don't understand the power of prayer. We don't understand the value of it. So here, when he says, um, when he's talking about prayer here, he's talking about when you do it, meaning this is going to be a part of your schedule. You're not going to ignore this thing because you need it. Now, the reason why I brought you to Matthew, because in Matthew, it, Matthew talks to you about the secret place. Luke talks to you about prayer, but Matthew brings to you about the secret place. So let's go back with me to verse um, six. He says, when you pray, enter thy closet. When he says closet here, he's talking about a quiet place where it's just you and God. OK, that could be your bedroom. That could be uh, the bathroom. That could be a, clo a literal closet. That can be just somewhere where nobody else can distract you. So you want to know if, if when he says you, the closet, when couples are, um, you know, most married couples, you know, they have their mat, their bedroom. That's where they can be the most freest because that's their space. That's their place of domain. So when God is saying that closet is the place where it's you and him in that secret place, that secret place is not the place for me, my wife and Dara to go. Does everybody understand that? That secret place is just for me and my Lord to meet. My wife has her own secret place. Because it's in that place that the Heavenly Father get to speak to his child, his one child, about his child's needs. All right. So he already know what what uh, Kita need before Kita even connect with them. So he don't want he need Kita. He would love to meet with Kita alone because there's some things he want to reveal to Kita about Kita that he don't need nobody else to know that. And that will be done in this secret place. So he says, when thy prayers shut the door. So I always tell people, I was telling the client the other day, I said, you, you know, in my book, I write about how you got to go to your daily counseling sessions with the Holy Spirit. And when you go, if anybody in here or anybody's watching right here, if you ever went to counseling or therapy, they don't have the doors wide open where everybody can hear you. And people are just sitting around. You ain't going to be sharing your deepest thoughts in that atmosphere. So if you ever go to therapy, you want the door shut. You want to make sure nobody can hear it so you can open up and be honest. That's what he's saying here because he says he already know what you need. And some of the things that you really need, you can't really articulate it if other people is around you. 
That's why in cor- corporate prayer is awesome. I am a, there's, when we talk about, we're going to be talking about corporate prayer and the power of it. But right now we're talking about the individualistic thing. There are some things that I was able to get breakthroughs with alone in my prayer time because I finally let God into some secret areas in my life and some personal areas in my life that I only can do if the door was shut. Who in here, <laughs> I'm not telling you how to do it, but in this corporate atmosphere, which one of y'all here will come up here and say, Lord, thank you so much, Lord God, for, 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 for that. I Thank you for, Lord God, for, Lord, you know that I hate my mother, Lord God. I thank you for healing. Who in here will feel comfortable saying that in front of everybody? <laughs> you ain't going to feel comfortable saying nothing about hating your mother in front of other people. That's too, that's too personal. I don't need to hear that. <laughs> So that need to go into a secret place so you can get healed from hating your mother. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because if you hate her, don't be telling, you don't need to be telling everybody else. That is not something we all need to know. <laughs> That's why he says, because he already know you have need. He already know you have need of healing in that area. So come in that secret place so he can fix that thing. But we don't pray out to God because we're too busy. <laughs> We go, we'd rather go pay counseling for, to tell somebody something. And remember, these people can't always help us. And our Lord is up there saying, I know what you need. Come in my, come meet me in this secret place. And I promise you, I'll show you some deep things about you. Now, he says, when you do it, shut the door. Now watch this and pray to who? Look at verse six. Who is he telling you to pray to? The father. Remember, we were talking about seeing God as father. Now, if you don't have that, if you never had that good relationship, you go. You, it's going to be hard for you to go and pray to him as father if you have issues with fathers, the title father. So he's trying to get a relationship with us. So he says, when you get into that intimate place, you got to go to him knowing that he already knows. He is my provider, my protector. He is my sustainer. He knows everything. So when I enter into this closet, I'm going in completely bare open. I'm not hiding nothing from him. And most people, do you know how many people I've talked to? And even me, when I first started to really pray, I used to go into prayer and wouldn't tell God what's really wrong. Isn't that something? I would go in there and try to tell him all these deep words. Key to oh God, you the most amazing, awesome. And I got all the sin in my heart and guilt and conviction. I, I'm I'm trying to he he don't want none of that. Give me the truth. When I begin to go in prayer and begin to tell God my emotions, how I felt emotions, how things bothered me, how I didn't understand things, and I would say things like God, you know me, you know me, you know how I think. Why am I like this? And then all you hear is quiet. Just like this. All you hear is quiet. Do you know in that atmosphere is so therapeutic because now you're finally being honest about your, that is why if you read the Psalms, God loved David because David was talking honestly. David wasn't talking to God about just fluffy stuff. He was telling God exactly what's going on in his heart. David saw his weaknesses. David wasn't trying to hide his weaknesses before God got he, he David was like, listen, you already know it. <laughs> I'm coming to you because you don't even know who can heal this craziness of me. But we want to but we want to hide that part from the one who can heal us. That does that make sense? And we can't do it all the time, get healed like that in a corporate setting, because in a corporate setting, you don't want nobody to know you're crazy. <laughs> But in private, you can tell God you're crazy and you who, who go hear it. He ain't go he ain't go spill that to nobody. You know how many times I went in prayer and told God things that I and that's why I'm here. That's why my healing had began, because I went in prayer and I was honest, very honest. And now I feel the healing power of God because of the secret place. And because I went to him as father, because I know that he already know what I have need of before I even walked in that door. He already know I don't need a new car. I don't need more money. I need something going on in here that make me act a fool when I get money. I pray this is helping somebody because, you know, we praying for stuff like money, cars, uh, relationships. And God is like, you don't need that. You need the thing that messes up the money, the car and the relationship. You need that thing fixed. And I can give you that in the secret place, but you don't meet with me. That's why you're never going to get healed. 
So when I came in and was honest about that, that's when the healing began. So he says, first of all, go into this secret place. Where he says, watch this. And thy father, the one you're talking to, who knows everything, who see it in secret, meaning he's going to be there watching you in secret, listening to you in relationship with you. He says, he shall reward you openly. So that when you are come now, when everybody see you, Jerome and Keita, and when they, when he, when people see y'all healed and happy and, and they're going to be like, man, I, I want a life like that. Well, if they didn't see you in the secret place crying your, crying your eyeballs out, but he rewards you openly now with the healing. You see what I'm saying? But most people, they want to act like they healed openly. <laughs> And deep down aside in bondage. That is not how prayer works. Prayer is you're taking you're taking spirit, soul, and body into the secret place, and you're saying, I'm opening up in front of you because you're my father. I came from you. You the one created me, and you know every part, you know my thoughts are far off. You know exactly what I'm about to you, you know what I'm gonna be thinking tomorrow. So I might as well come to you and just lay it all out, and you're gonna be shocked. And how compassionate and how loving your God is and how he much of that part of you he been waiting for. That's the part. That's the healing. I'm just telling you right now, the healing is in that part. And for years, I've been, Dora, I've been trying to give him everything but that. I've been trying to give him the vain repetition. Oh, I prayed two hours today. Abraham, I prayed three hours today. Oh, I know God is pleased. But in those three hours, I was praying dumb stuff. As opposed to giving him 30 minutes, Jerome, of the honest core. And my father, now my heavenly father, is, there is to the point that I come, I, sometimes I go into prayer and I don't even say nothing. I just be sitting there and I let him just, he be showing me stuff about me. He'll bring stuff out of him. I'm like, oh, thank you, God, for showing me that. Thank you. For, oh, wow. Thank you for showing me that. He, it's like he wants us healed. He's trying to get us ready for his return. Remember, none but the pure heart shall see God. That's what the scripture says. So he's trying to purify our hearts. And the way he's going to do that is by reveal things that's already in us that he's trying to get out of us. And those areas are going to happen in the secret place. And when we go into the secret place, humble, remember, if y'all if y'all listen to the message Pastor Al Robinson preached a couple of weeks ago about the Pharisee. That Pharisee was beaten, was, was, was standing up. Oh, I thank God I'm not like this, this tax, this tax collector. And, and the tax collector was beating his chest saying, have mercy on me. And from heaven's perspective, that tax collector was more, left more righteous because he was like, I need help. And until we become honest and say, I need help, our father is like, listen, I can't reward you openly, but you're only going to ask for help when you come into the secret place, because in the secret place, there's no there's nowhere to hide. You can be honest here. So when you pray, he says, shut the door. Don't let everybody in this time with you. This is you and your father speaking. The one who knows your crazy brain. <laughs> the one who knows your genius brain, the one you, who knows your intelligent brain, the one who knows that you hey, listen. No, why? Why? Did, why are you the one who always think left to the right and everybody else think right to the left? He made you think that's by accident. <laughs> he ain't. He ain't up there saying why is cheap? Why he so crazy? No, no. He know that. And but if we don't go to the one who made us that way, we gonna be thinking something is wrong. And that's actually could be the actual thing that he used you for your purpose, that he's going to use for your purpose. Now, let's go to the next part. So he says he's going to reward you over verse seven. But when you pray, remember the word when use not a lot of words, meaning don't get caught up with how much you say as the heathens do, for they think they should be heard because they talk a lot. You, you know, the people I, if four hours a day, I pray. But if is heaven listening is the question. That's the whole question. Is your father hearing you? That's the whole question. Let's go to the next verse. It says, uh, be not like them in verse eight for your heavenly father knoweth what you have need before you ask. So just so y'all know, before y'all, before you ask for your next thing. <laughs> thank you. Just so you know, the thing, the thing that you, you don't even, you ain't even think, you don't even know what you go ask yet. And he already know what you go, what you need before you even ask the thing. Before you even formulate the question, the thing is already, he already, he was already like, in, in a couple of years, she go ask this. 
That's how much he's connected to you. And he's like, come to me. I already know it. And we go to people who don't know what we need. We rather tell them our heart. And then when they betray us, we get mad. They were not designed to hold that part of you. All right. So now let's go to the next part. He says, now, let me tell you how to pray. And this is where Luke was telling us last week. He says, after this men or pray, our father, you notice it starts with that relationship with the father. He says, our father, which art in heaven. Now watch this. Hallowed be thy name, meaning you got to reverence him. You got to understand he's not your homie. Because everybody want to make the Lord their homie. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I can say this on camera because I think uh, I think you guys will understand this. Who in here know um, Barack Obama? Raise your hand. Who, who know Barack Obama? Okay. All right. Good. Do you know how many people have said, I know him and have never met that man? Never met him. Never heard. Jerome never met him. Oh, I know Barack. Call, talk, call him by his first name as if there's a relationship there. Do you know how many people have this thing in their brain that people know them and they really don't know them? You know, remember uh, confession time and y'all can be. Have any of y'all uh, or any of y'all on the camera? Have any of y'all ever when y'all were young? Y'all had uh, y'all famous uh, movie stars or actors. And y'all remember those big posters that you can buy of these actors and you would put them in your room? Uh, am I dating myself? Uh, <laughs> uh oh, yeah. Okay, good. And, and you would go in a room and you would see this person's picture in the room. You know, I just think about my sister, uh, God rest her soul. She had Michael Jackson. She had a big poster of Michael Jackson. You know, when he when he did the album, when he would lay next to that tiger or that leopard or whatever, and, and he would be laying there, and I would go and and in her mind, <laughs> she knew him <laughs> in her mind. I know that man. On, he, I have his poster. I see him every day. Michael don't have a clue who my sister is. <laughs> but in her mind, in her mind. I'm not saying she did it, but in her mind, she could have formed a relationship with him in her mind that was not real. Is this making sense? Do you know how many people are doing that about God? Oh, me and God is homies. And he like, I'm not your homie yet. I need to be your father first. Let's get that established first. You need to make sure you know that I created all things. <laughs> If you don't know that I created all things, you go come talk to me as, as, as if I can't do nothing because your homies don't know how to do nothing. So you will come talk to me the same way. So you coming to me complaining about, uh, God, I, I need $20. And God is like, you talking to the person who made the money, but you don't know me. That's why you come to me this way. So he says, first, let's establish this relationship and don't establish it fictitiously. Establish it and know that who he is. He is the creator. He is your provider. He's your protector. He is your source. First, you got to get that understanding of who he is. That's why he says, hallow it be thy name. You got to be sure of who you're talking to. You are talking to the one who created Genesis chapter one, who created everything that you're sitting on right now. He spoke the world to the existence. That same God you are meeting in a private room. And he is your father. He says, when you get that understanding, let's move to the next step. So we, the first step, which we talked about last week, was seeing God as Father. The second step is going to be right here in verse number 10. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And that's where I'm going to talk about for the last few minutes. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? In earth as it is where? So that means heaven has a will done. I hope y'all get this in heaven. It's done. But where do it need to manifest on earth? And guess who he want to manifest it through through us? Y'all are made. Y'all, these, they are amazing. That's why the devil is attacking y'all. That's why he attacks me, because he don't want what is done in heaven to be on earth. So what he says in prayer is pray. Pray. 
that what heaven has already got done will be done in heaven, will be done on earth. But in order for that to happen, it's going to come through God's disciples, his, his children. That's why you got to pray this prayer about let thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So what should be after we acknowledge who we're praying to in secret, the next thing we should be focusing on is his agenda. Because he has a plan for you, Dora. He has a plan and that plan is already done in heaven. So when you go into prayer, you're not going to prayer trying to make up a plan. Does that make sense? <laughs> Your plan is already done. So all you got to do is tap into the plan that's already happening for you. I pray this is a blessing, you guys. Kita is already done. Everything that you're supposed to be doing here on earth is already written and done up in heaven. All we got to do is find that frequency and duplicate what's already done in heaven here. But somebody tell me how you go find it. In prayer. Now you want to understand why he say shut the door? Don't be, you know what shutting the door does? It keep you away from distractions because when you shut the door, you get to hear these frequencies that says, Kita, you're supposed to be opening this business here. But I can't hear that if I already got, always got music going. <laughs> if I'm always listening to loud stuff and I can't hear, God, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, if I just shut everything down in my secret place, first acknowledge that he is my creator, he is my source, he is everything, and, the, and his agenda is, he wants his agenda done on earth, and he have me a part of that. And he wants me to do something specific for his kingdom. I got to figure out what that is, and we call that purpose. So I got to get alone to hear what that thing is. That's why the devil is, the number one attack is, don't show Abraham, don't show Jerome what their assignment on earth is. Because if they don't do their assignment on earth, what is done in heaven ain't going to be manifested. So it's all, a, it's all an attack from the enemy against God's agenda on earth. That's why it's not by accident that you're working at the job you're working at. That's not as by accident that you live where you live. That's not as by accident why he led you where he led you. So perfect example, Abraham, God has a perfect plan for your life. He, he brought you here. I l listen to your story. He brought you here from another country. All this, all this is happening and everything that's happening is not by accident. You're on this block for a purpose. In heaven, heaven already see everything from Abraham's life all the way to the end of his story. All he has to do is get in the secret place to hear it. So again, right now on, um, I don't think none of y'all listen to that station, but um, 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 let's go, let's, I'm just going to pick 93.7. Right now, why we hear 93.7 is playing music. Can we hear it? Why? Huh? We're not around it and we're not tuned into their frequency. But is they still playing music? So you see how we can miss something if we're not in the frequency? So guess what? You, there is a spiritual frequency with all your, with your assignment in it. And you can get to that frequency in the secret place in prayer. So you get locked. Man, listen. Lord, help me, Jesus. I, I want to go into testimony mode, but I'm not going to do it today because I'm here to tell y'all right now, there has been some things and I will confess there has been some things I have not seen manifest yet, but I already know what's going to happen. But there has been some things that I clearly, clearly when I was in the secret place with my heavenly father and I saw him as my creator and I saw him as the one who created everything, not somebody who was up there scratching his head saying, oh my God, how I'm going to fix this. I'm talking about somebody who I know that can do anything. I had to see him like that and go to him and really before I start asking him for to bless me and all this stuff, no, I'm talking about going in there, first acknowledging who I'm talking to and then the second thing I say, Lord, you have a plan for my life reveal what is already done in heaven the plan that you have for me here show me that 
Do you know without fail, every time I ask him about his plan, he never hides it from me. When I ask him about my plan, that's a different story. Uh oh. Because, <laughs> you know, my plan may not be the one that's written up there. He's not obligated to answer that one. Because I know we like to make him, you know, Lord, you got to you got to answer this one. This is why he says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart, because your heart's desire is actually in the thing that's done in heaven for you. I prayed, man, I'm getting excited. Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I get passionate about this because I've. I've seen, this is revelation I'm talking about. This is stuff that I see, principles I've seen work in my life. This is no game. He's like, you give me time in a secret place, alone, faithfully, not once a week, not when you can fit me. You meet with me every day and watch what I start revealing to you. That back there, y'all see, that was revealed in a secret place. That woman right there. Huh? <laughs> I know that. Her. That blessing, that amazing specimen of a, of a creature. <laughs> that amazing woman of God. <laughs> it was, listen, so when it, was, when it was downloaded to me about her, before I met her, it was downloaded to me because before it was downloaded to me, I was meeting with him in a secret place. So he tapped me into a frequency that said, your wife is coming soon. She's going to be like this. Blah, blah, blah. That was a frequency that I tapped into Jerome five years before I met her. I am telling y'all from experience. There has been things he showed me and I'm sitting up there saying, you, wait a minute. Why did you just show me that? He's showing you what's in heaven that's already done for you. He just needed here on earth to manifest. That's why I said, don't worry about the wife. Don't worry about the husband. Don't worry about the families. Heaven already seen it. We're the ones scrambling. We're the ones up here talking about, oh my God, is it this? Is it this? And heaven is saying, why won't they just turn to 93.7? The music is already playing. They just not turn, tuning in. They too distracted. So they can't hear the latest song because they never listen. <laughs> so a smart person who want to hear the latest song, and if I was, a, I was, I used to be a DJ, so I used to always have to listen to new music. So 93.7 to me, I had to listen to it every day. It wasn't an option because my boss said, you got to be the one to listen to the latest stuff that the people like. So my job was to listen to 93.7 so I know what the DJ when we all met on Tuesday and Sunday night at the skating rink. Isn't that something? It wasn't if I listened to 93. It was when. And when I was listening to 9307, I knew all the latest hits. I knew all the hits. That, I knew all the songs, Jerome, that they would play four times a day. I'm like, oh, this is important. So I would go tell my boss, we need to order this. 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 Because I was on that frequency all day. And heaven got your house, <laughs> your mate, <laughs> your job. <laughs> Babe, I wanted so bad just testify about your blessing. <laughs> She said, testify. I want to, I want to so bad, but I, because, because what we don't understand is there's a will that heaven has. We got to pray his will. We're so busy praying ours. That is the issue. We're so busy trying to get God to, 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 to leave 93.7 and come to another station. God is like, I'm already on 93.7. You got to come where I'm at. You come here, I'll, I'll reveal to you all the deep things that's already here. But we too busy. I'm, t I'm just telling you, that's why people don't pray, because they don't think that he has a will. Most people, when they approach prayer, they are approaching it selfishly. They only want him to be a Santa Claus. They don't see him as father. They don't believe he can do nothing, Dora. So when they come to him, they come to him already doubting. And the scripture says, without faith, it is what? Impossible to even to please him. So if you're coming in with doubt, your prayer already start off off. <laughs> So if you if you coming in there with no faith, he like you ain't even pleasing me from from the first word. 
So you got to know who you're talking to. That's step number one. And step number two, once you know who you're talking to, once you know that he's the one who created fish, he the one who created your boat, he the one who created your business, he the one who created all that, I get to speak with him every day in what we call a secret closet, secret place. And guess what? Now I know who I'm talking to. I also know that he has a agenda that he wants done on earth. And he wants me to be a part of it. And if I go to prayer with that mindset, I promise you, you're going to be praying differently. You're going to stop going to God saying, God, I need money. I need money. You ain't going to be thinking about money. You're going to be going to God saying, Lord, I already thank you that everything I need is provided. You want to know why it's provided? Because I got to do your will. But we ain't thinking about his will. That's why we're struggling with money. You see what I'm trying? To, uh, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting too, I'm about to run off the stage. Because y'all looking at a guy who used to pray for money. I used to pray for money. God, I need more money. God, I, need, I don't even pray for that no more. I just say, God, um, for what you want me to do here on earth, it requires $10,000. You see what I just did? I didn't say, God, I need $10,000. I said, for what you need done on earth, need $10,000. Every time I bring it to his will, this stuff always happens. Because he wants his will done on earth, right? So guess what? He's going to fund that need. But if you ain't going to do his will, why should he answer your prayer? If that is one of his most important things from you, why would he answer your prayer if he can't get his will done through you? Why would he give you that house if he already know that you don't that he that you ain't even thinking about his will? You just want a house to look good and post on Facebook. He like that is not my will for you to have this beautiful house just to take selfies in front of a swimming pool. If that house can't further my agenda, you don't need it. Man, this is this is Lord have mercy. But watch this: if you can find a reason <laughs> to that that house. That twenty bedroom house. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I, I, <laughs> oh, hey, if you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, now watch this. When I when I got my house, I remember. I'm gonna be honest. When when God blessed me with my new house, when I had it, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm single and I'm sitting up here and I'm like, I don't need all these bedrooms. I'm a single man. People used to ask me all the time. They're like, What you gonna do in this big house? Somebody tell me why? Why would God give me a house? Like that, Jerome. For, 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 I, he knew my family was coming because the family is part of his will. <laughs> Lord help me. If they was not part of the will, I could tell you right now, I would be just, I would still be sitting up here in a little apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but the house was not for me. It was to fulfill a will because he already knew that I need to raise a family in the house and the family I'm raising in the house is going to be a part. We are going to be doing a ministry together and we need a place to raise our family for his kingdom. That was all for his kingdom. Why do you think he blessed me to, to have favor to get that brand new truck? I wasn't thick man. Listen, why why would he send a person in my life to to who at the time I couldn't even get the I didn't my I didn't my credit wasn't even good enough to get it and 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 the man came out of nowhere. I can Lord I can tell I can tell y'all this ain't the Mercedes testimony that I was telling y'all about. This is another one. A guy I met out of nowhere. I met him for two weeks and this man had a connection with the person at the dealer. And he said, and, and one day I was driving with the car and the car needed an inspector. And I said, man, I, and I just happened to say it because I was taking him home because the guy who helped me didn't even have a car. And I took him home one day, kid, and I said, man, do you know a place that I can, I can get an inspection sticker? I need some help. And he said, man, oh man, I know everybody. And I'm, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, he's just talking, you know. That 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 stuff that he drinking may just be speaking through him, you know. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm taking him home, and this brother, and I said to him, man, when, I told him, I said, one day I'm gonna get me a new a new something brand new. I've never had nothing brand new, Dora. Never a brand new. Now I'm talking about straight from the factory. Never. He looked at me. He said, "You want a new truck?" <laughs> I said, yeah. And he said, man, I got you. I got you. I said, this dude is lying. I, in my mind, I'm, Lord, forgive me. But I'm like, this dude is, he, he just talking. 
Did you know this brother told me, he said, pick me up tomorrow morning. I said, I'm like this. I'm like, Lord. <laughs> and I did. I picked him up. We went out. Because <laughs> I'm like, hey, he was convincing. And we drove out to uh, the, the new place. And the new, and I went to a couple of, now watch this, I went to a couple of places without this guy, and every place was like, sorry, you, you gotta build your credit more. Sorry, you gotta build your credit more. You don't have bad credit, you just don't have enough. You gotta, and I'm like, but I don't have a bad credit score. Yeah, but you don't have enough credit. And I'm sitting there, I'm all like, this, I went to six different places, Dora, and none of them would let me go. And then all of a sudden, this guy who I met at a, I, 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 I met him at some function, and he needed a ride home, and I just gave him a ride home. And this guy literally took me to the dealer, and when he walked in that place, everybody was like, hey, Ty. His name was Ty. Hey, what's up, Tyrone? Everybody was walking up to him, and he was walking over. He had a little K. He was a little, you know, I don't know if you're watching Tyrone. If you're there, thank you, man. And he was just walking with his little K. Yo, my man here need a new truck. He said it just like that. Just met me maybe a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago. My man need a new truck. Y'all hook him up. And so the lady, uh, Miss, uh, I forgot her uh, Italian lady. She took me to the booth. All right, what, what do you, what do you want? And I'm sitting there like, is this really happening? Like in my mind, I'm like, is this really happening? She said, yeah, um, yeah, we can get you. And Tyra was like, hey, oh, her name was Mary. He said, he said, yo, Mary, hook my man up. He was straight from the hood, Kita. He said, hook my man up. He didn't say help him out. He said, hook him up. And, and Mary was like, okay. And Mary sat behind the table. She said, let me see what I can do for you, Mr. Salter. And I'm sitting there. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sitting there all this time. But I'm like, God, if this happened, I ain't gonna lie. I said, I said God, if this happened, I'm gonna laugh. Because first of all, I tried to do this on my own. I tried to go fishing by myself and caught no fish. Y'all remember that lesson? And I'm sitting up here. And that lady came back and she said, sorry, Mrs. Sauter, um, you, your credit, the same thing the other places said. I said, see, I knew it. I knew it. In my mind, I said, see, I haven't knew it. Tyrone was still out there eating cookies. Tyrone, and she, Tyrone was like, yo, Mary, come on now. The man can do this, 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 this. What can you do? But he's... And she said, okay, give me one more minute. She went to the back room. They came back. They said, can you, can you pay this? I said, yeah, I can pay that. They was like, the truck is yours. Uh, brand new. The first ever. It smelled so new. It had plastic on the seats. I, it was the first. I was the first person to ever drive it. But you want to know what the crazy part about this was? Uh, I got the brand new truck with the brand new house in the same season everything was new like i was touching the thing for the first time and i kept saying to myself why why is all this stuff happening in my life right now and then i started god started showing me you've been meeting me in the secret place i'm rewarding you openly now And when you would go to the secret place, you knew me as father. You know where my doubt came? My doubt didn't come from God, towards God. My doubt came up based on who God was using, <laughs> which is a form of doubt in God. Because <laughs> I go like the person he used kind of had me like, you know, because he, you know, Tyrone was a little hood, you know, he, I'm like, how did he go know these people? These new? And he walked up in there. And he knew everybody. They was all giving him hype. I was like, this. But, and watch this. After I get the truck, I don't see the man no more. Because God knows how to reward you openly when you meet him faithfully in a secret place. And watch this. Why was the truck new? Because of the assignment that God was moving me into. Knew, he knew that I needed something reliable to get back and forth to do his will I pray this message bless y'all if that truck was just for me to show off I promise you I wouldn't have gotten it the truck was for his will which means I never had a car issue 
going to do the work. So I would, and then after I got the truck, all of a sudden people were calling me, can you speak here? Can you speak here? Can you come play here? Can you do this? Can you speak here? Can you minister to these people here? And I was like, yes, 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 yes. I didn't care where the, where the distance was because I had a new vehicle that wouldn't break down. So the vehicle was not just because I prayed for it. It was because I said, your will be done. If that didn't bless y'all tonight, I don't know what else to say. I just gave y'all step number two that will transform your prayer life. Start praying his will and stop praying yours and watch what happened. Let's give God a hand praise. Let's bow our heads at this time. Father, I thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would just help us to seek your will. First of all, Lord God, help us to see you as our source, our Father. But Lord, now help us to seek your will, your agenda, your kingdom, your assignment, the things that you want done here on earth. You want to do it through us. And God, I just pray tonight that we all will say yes to what you want to see done on earth through us. God, we love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. For those of you who are watching, we just, I'm asking you right now, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I just want to encourage you today to please give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will soon be coming back for his people. And I would love for you to make a wise decision for your eternity. If you want to give your life to Christ Jesus today, he loves you so much. He died on the cross for your sins. And listen, all you have to do is accept him into your heart and you will be accepted into the beloved and you will be able to come to him as father. So if this is you, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Please say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you have died. You rose again on the third day. Please change me. Cause me to be one of your disciples. Thank you again for saving my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. If that is you, the angels in heaven are rejoicing, and we are rejoicing here at Fuel 60 Church. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to connect with us. And until next week, please join and meet your heavenly Father in the secret place and watch him reward you openly in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Praise, guys. Amen.